This is the fourth installment of my Borg review, and you'll have 10 seconds for each question. Let's look at the answers. This is case 31. And in this case, we have right upper lobe collapse and we have bulging of the minor fissure here as we go from the periphery towards the hilum. And you might recognize this as the S sign of golden, which is a right upper lobe collapse caused by something obstructing the right upper lobe bronchus. And this is usually due to a hilar mass like a lung cancer. So D is the correct answer here. The reason why it's probably not a mediastinal mass is that this bulge right here is happening more towards the hilum and not in the mediastinum. And just in general, whenever you see the S sign of golden, it's not really usually due to a mediastinal mass, but more likely from a hilar mass. Case 32. In this case, the abnormality was that there's hyperlucency at the left base, and you might recognize this as a deep sulcus sign. The deep sulcus sign is a sign of a pneumothorax in a supine patient. So rather than the air in the pleura going up towards the apex, which there is actually air at the apex here, it mainly collects at the base. And the reason is this is the most anti-dependent space when a patient is in the supine position. So the costophrenic angle sp specifically in the case of a deep sulcus sign is going to be uh, lower than the contralateral side. So here the costophrenic angle is here. 
on the left side, you actually don't even see the costophrenic angle. It's outside of the film. So another sign that you have here is that the left hemidiaphragm is depressed compared to the other side. That's another clue that this is a pneumothorax. Case 33. Patient with sudden onset cough, what is the most likely diagnosis? And the correct answer here was C, pneumomediastinum. If you picked up on the abnormality, then this was probably an easy question for you. And the abnormality that we see here is hyperlucency or lucent lines in the superior aspect of the mediastinum here, as well as hyperlucency along the uh, left hemidiaphragm here. Okay, and these are all signs of pneumomediastinum. So it's possible that the patient could have Borhoff syndrome, but pneumomediastinum is the more specific and correct answer. Case 34. The question is point to the abnormality, and the abnormality is right here. It's at the right tracheobronchial angle, right where the azagous vein lives. So the question is, which is associated with this finding? So the answer is A, polysplenia. Okay. All of these other answer choices were red herrings. Infertility might be pointing to something like uh, ciliary dyskinesia, so that's incorrect. Sinus venosis ASD is something that you see in a uh, partial anomalous pulmonary venous return, particularly when it's in the right. Rib notching is associated with aortic coartation. Lymphadenopathy um, is just another red herring. It's not really associated with anything specific. But um, this is um, uh, enlarged azagous vein in a patient with a heterotaxy syndrome. And they have, if we were to do a CT of their abdomen, it would show that they have interruption of their IVC with azagous continuation. Case 35. So the question is, what is the name of this sign? And so first you have to identify the abnormality. And the abnormality is that there is something here that looks like it's superimposed over the left hilum. And the question really is, is this abnormality in the hilum or is it somewhere else, either anterior or posterior to the hilum? And to answer that question, you'll see that we can see this hilar vessel here very well defined despite the fact that the abnormality is right on top of the hilum. So therefore, this is a positive, positive hilum overlay sign and the mass or the consolidation is either anterior or posterior to the hilum. The hilum convergence sign is an attempt to identify whether a hilar lesion is either due to vasculature or to a hilar mass, so this is not correct. Uh, the Fleischner sign is due to an enlarged pulmonary artery from a pulmonary embolism, so that's incorrect. A halo sign is really something you see on CT, not really on radiographs. And the finger and glove sign is what you would see in a patient with ABPA, and it just looks like kind of like mucus plugging. So that's not correct. So this is the hilum overlay sign. So the next question is, where is the abnormality? So if you got the hilum overlay sign, then this should be an easy answer for you. It's not in the left hilum. It's either anterior or posterior to the left hilum. It's not in the right hilum. C is the correct answer choice here. It's not D and it's not E. And here's the abnormality on the lateral view. You could clearly see here that there is an area of mass-like consolidation and it is anterior to the hilum on the lateral view. Case 36. In this case, I gave you four slices of a CT of the chest from upper lungs to lower lungs. And the question is, what is the craniocaudal distribution? And if you just look at the first one and then the last one, you could see that there's quite a lot more fibrosis in the lower lungs compared to the upper lungs. So the correct answer here is B, lower. The next question in this set is, what is the most likely diagnosis? And here I'm talking about the radiologic or histologic diagnosis. And the answer here was UIP. And how I arrived at that is by first looking at the distribution. So I've already established that this is a lower low predominant pattern. 
The next thing I want to do is establish whether it's central or peripheral predominant. And if I look at these first three, it's clear to see that this is mainly a peripheral predominant pattern compared to a central or peribronchial pattern. And then finally, if I look closely at the pattern itself, I see a lot of honeycombing. So this would be a definite UIP pattern here, and the correct answer is A. The final question in this set is that this pattern is mostly associated with what disease? So if you know about UIP, you'll know that most cases of UIP are idiopathic, i.e. secondary to IPF, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and the, the correct answer here is E. Now you might also say that this is also associated with rheumatoid arthritis, and you'd be right, but most cases are not from rheumatoid arthritis. Most cases are, in fact, idiopathic. Case 37. What sign is demonstrated here? All right, so what we have here is a patient whose minor fissure is pulled upward because of volume loss in their right upper lobe. And the sign that we have here is this kind of tenting of the right hemidiaphragm, and this is something called a juxtaphrenic peak sign, the juxtaphrenic peak sign. The second question in this set is the juxtaphrenic peak sign is associated with what? And the correct answer here is A, upper lobe volume loss. Okay, so remember the juxtaphrenic peak is something that happens along the diaphragm, but it's not associated with lower lobe volume loss. This is something you really see with upper lobe volume loss. Case 38. In this case, I've told you that the patient has sarcoid, and I'm asking you what this feature is. And if you've read the Fleischner glossary, then you'll know that this is something called a pseudoplaque. So it looks like these abnormalities are pleural plaques, but because I gave you that history of sarcoid, you should know that this is not an abnormality that's in the pleura, but it's in the lung, in the subpleural part of the lung that abuts the pleura. And what it represents are really zillions of tiny little sarcoid nodules that conglomerate together along the pleura to form what looks like a plaque in the pleura, but it's actually in the lung. Case 39. So in this case, I gave you two sets of images, and these are CT images at the same level. So this is inspiration and this is expiration. And you can tell that because on the inspiration, there is a circular shape of the trachea. And on the expiration, the posterior membrane of the trachea is flattened and even bowed up slightly. So that's how you know that these are expiratory images. And the finding is that on the inspiration, it looks fairly normal, although there is some mosaicism here. But on the exhalation, that mosaic attenuation pattern gets quite well defined. And that's what mosaic attenuation is, and this is the correct answer. So mosaic attenuation is well demarcated areas of high density lung right next to low density lung. And in this case, the low density lung is the abnormal lung because it, be, it should become more white like this part of the lung. And that's because as you exhale, the proportion of gas in the lung decreases with respect to the amount of soft tissue. So it, it should become white like this. The fact that it doesn't become white means there's air trapping from some kind of small airways obstruction. Tracheomalacia is incorrect because uh, we don't really have collapse of the trachea with exhalation. This is not crazy paving because we don't really see the inter or intralobular septal thickening. This is not the atoll sign, which is uh, something associated with organizing pneumonia, among other things. And the next question in this set is, which of these is least likely? So the, the question is really getting at which of these is not really associated with an airway-centric process. And all three of these are, except for chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, this is something to do with a pulmonary arterial process instead of an airway process. So this is the correct answer. Now this mosaic attenuation pattern can be seen with CTEF, but it's not something that becomes this much more dramatic when the patient exhales. That is not a feature of CTEF. So that is why this is the correct answer. Case 40. 
which sign is associated with this diagnosis, okay? And the answer to this question is the comet tail sign. So you have a few clues here as to what is going on. First of all, you can tell that there is a little bit of a pleural effusion here. And if you look closely, there's some slight hyperdensity. So there's thickening of the parietal pleura here. Okay. Another sign is that we have inferior retraction of the major fissure, so that's a sign of volume loss. And then we have this rounded opacity here that abuts the abnormal pleura. So these are all things that are associated with round atelectasis. Okay. And the comet tail is simply a swirling or a distortion of the vessels that lead into the abnormality and that is associated with round atelectasis. Melting ice cube sign is something associated with uh, uh, resolution of a pulmonary infarct. Reverse halo sign um, can be associated with a number of things, pulmonary infarcts being one of them, um, certain fungal infections another one. The split pleura sign is something that you see with empyemas, and you might have said this, except um, I didn't really give you contrast or soft tissue windows here, so that's probably not the best answer. And then atoll sign, again, is something that is associated with organizing pneumonia, which is not the correct answer. So the most likely diagnosis in this case is round atelectasis. And that was the last question. If you have any questions about any of these cases, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it. Thanks.